Hello everyone and welcome to my third video this semester and in this video I'm going to be going over how to find the density of a perfectly cylindrical object that is floating in some body of water. So we'll just assume it's a floating log in a river, right? And so we have the level of our water here. We have our, our log here with a length of an L. And then we have the height of that log above the water as being equal to h, and then we have our radius here being r. And so starting off with, we'll go ahead and assume that the velocity is zero, so it's not moving, it's stationary. And if our velocity is zero, then our acceleration has to be equal to zero as well. So if acceleration is zero, well, we know that the net force on the object has to be zero. Because that, the net force is going to be equal to mass times acceleration. Obviously, if the acceleration is zero, then it has to be equal to zero. And our net force has to be equal to zero. Now, what's our net force? Well, we certainly don't have no forces on it. We have the weight of our log, and then we also have the buoyant force pushing up. So our net force is equal to the force of buoyancy, just say Fb, minus the weight of our log, which is the mass of the log times the force of gravity. That's equal to zero. And so we can see here that the force of buoyancy on our log is equal to the weight of the log. Well, the force of buoyancy is actually just equal to the weight of the water displaced by the log as the log enters the water. And so moving this over here and defining our force of buoyancy as the weight of the water displaced, we'll find that the mass of the water displaced times the force of gravity is equal to the mass of the log times the force of gravity. And of course, the force of gravity terms on both sides cancel out. So we're left with the mass of water being equal to the mass of the, sorry, the mass of the water displaced equal to the mass of the log. And so from here, we can define our mass as a function of volume and the density of the material we're using. So the mass of our log is pretty straightforward. We could just say the density of our log times the volume of our log, and that will give us the mass, right? And so I'll bring this over here. So the mass of our log is going to be equal to the density of our log times the volume of our log. What's the volume? The cross-sectional area of our log. So it's a perfect circle. So it's pi r squared. times the length of our log times L. And that's equal to the mass of the water displaced. So what's the mass of the water displaced? We can write it in a similar way, but we use the volume of water displaced. The volume of water displaced would just be the volume of the log below the water level. And that's not as easy to find. It's pretty, it's just not straightforward. So go ahead and say the density of the water. So rho water times the volume of the log underwater. But we're gonna have an L term for our length. But what is the cross-sectional area of the log under the water? Well, we'll just make up a variable and I'm going to write this bigger so it's easy to see. But we'll just define that cross-sectional area as being equal to the area of this section right here. So the area of the logs cross-sectional view below the water. And we still have that length and density of water variables. 
And of course, the length terms both, both cancel out, and we're left with the density of water times the cross-sectional area of the log below the water being equal to the density of the log times pi r squared. And of course, if we're solving for the density of the log, we'll just take, and we'll divide both sides by pi r squared. And we also know the density of water as being 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And so we're left with the density of the log as being equal to the density of the water times the cross-sectional area of the log under the water. So that's 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times our unknown variable divided by pi r squared. But how do we find this? Well, it's not straightforward, but it is simple. And so we'll go ahead and we can notice that this section here, this area that we're looking for, is equal to the entire circle divided, or sorry, minus this cap, this top section here. And so, all right, let's see. So we have this cross-sectional area of the log under the water is equal to the area of a circle, the entire circle, minus that top section right there. The area of that top section. And this area of the top section here is actually equal to the area of a sector minus the triangular base of the sector. So I've rewritten it down here to make it easier to see. Hopefully it focuses okay. We have the area of the sector is right here, right? So we have that section right there. And the angle of, so we have the, this sector right here, and then we can subtract the area of this triangular base, the sector, that would give us the area of this cap, right? And we have still the height of the log above the water, it's being h. We also have the height of this triangle as being equal to the radius minus the height of the log above the water. And then we also have the radius, and we have an angle theta, because we know that this is a right triangle. It makes it pretty simple to solve. So we have the area of that little cap of a circle is equal to the area of a sector minus the triangular base's area. And these are pretty easy to solve for. And then we know the area of the circle. And so to solve for the area of the sector, we know we can just take the angle here. And by the way, we've defined our angle. We have theta as being equal to the angle that the radius makes with the r minus h term, or the height of our triangle. So the it would be equal to 2 theta divided by 2 pi times the entire area of our circle, which is pi r squared. And so the area of our sector ends up being theta r squared. And we can solve for theta because we can use the, or we can solve for theta using r and r minus h, which are two dimensions of our triangle, right? We have r as the hypotenuse of our right angle triangle, and then we have r minus h as being the height of our right angle triangle. And so we know that theta is just going to be equal to the inverse cosine of the height of our triangle, r minus h, divided by the 
hypotenuse of our triangle, which is R. So rewriting this equation, we can find that the area of a sector the area of a sector is equal to theta times r squared. So r squared times our theta term ends up just being inverse cosine of r minus h over r. Because we're solving for theta in this right angle triangle, we can find, we know that theta is going to be equal to the inverse cosine of the adjacent dimension of the triangle divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle. The adjacent length of the triangle is r minus h, the height right there. And then the hypotenuse, of course, is just the radius of our circle. So theta is the inverse cosine of r minus h over r. And then to find the area of the triangular base of our sector, sorry, over here. Well, it's pretty easy to find half of the area of our triangular base because, I'll draw that later, because we have pretty, or we have the dimensions needed already. So the triangle, triangular area, of our sector here. So if we wanted to find just half of the triangular base of our sector, we only need to use the area of right angle, right angle triangle. The formula for the area of a right angle triangle, which is one half base times height. The base of our triangle here is x as we've defined it. So we have one half x times the height of our triangle, which is r minus h. And then we can define x as a function of r and h as well, because well, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem. And so x here is just going to be equal to the square root of r squared minus the squared difference between r and h. So x will end up being equal to the square root of r squared minus r minus h all squared. And then we can reevaluate or uh, we can simplify this so that x is equal to the square root of 2r times h minus h squared. And all we've done there is just evaluated the term on the right, which is r minus h squared, and then subtracted that evaluated term from r squared. And that gives us the simplified version of it. And then we can just plug that in here. So now we have the equation for half of our triangular base's area. Well, if we wanted the area of that entire, of that entire triangular base, we would just multiply it by two, right? And so that gets rid of this one half term in the front. So the area of our triangle, or the triangular base of a sector is equal to this x term times r minus h. So we have the square root of 2rh minus h squared, and all of that times r minus h. And so now that we've found the area of our triangular, triangular base of the sector, and we found the area of the sector, now we can pretty easily find the area of that cap there because it's equal to the difference between the two, these two areas. And then if we subtract the area of the triangle, or the area of that cap from 
the area of a circle, we'll find the area of our logs, the cross-sectional area of our log that's below the water. And so I'm going to erase all of this real quick and then just plug in the two equations that we found here. So we have the area of our log beneath the water is equal to the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, minus that cap, this section right here, the cap of our circle, which is equal to the area of the sector with the particular angle theta minus the angle of our triangle there. And so the angle of the sector is r squared cosine inverse of r minus h over r. And then we subtract the area of the triangle here. We subtract r minus h times the square root of 2rh minus h squared. And so that's the area of our logs, cross, the cross-sectional area of our log beneath the water. And we can just put this into this equation here to solve for the density of our log. And so to do that, I'm going to erase all of this blue and just leave this right here and give myself some more room. This is a pretty interesting result because we're actually able to find the density of our log by just comparing it to the density of water, assuming we've measured the radius and the height of the log of the water. So we have the density of the water, or sorry, the density of the log is equal to the density of water, 1,000 kilograms per meter squared. I'm not going to have enough room over here. Um, so the density of our log is equal to 1,000 kilograms per meter squared, the density of our water. times the area of our, the cross-section area of our log beneath the water, which is this whole term here. So pi r squared minus this difference here, which is r squared times the inverse cosine of r minus h over r minus the second term, r minus h times the square root of 2rh minus h squared. And then that's all divided by pi r squared. And so once again, we found the density of our log by comparing it to the density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter squared, and also assuming we measured the radius and the height of the log above the water. So I hope you found this interesting, and thank you for watching.